I'm doing a video response to a tag that's going around. Um, I think it was started by Mrs. Brimbles, Anna Brim. So Anna Brim wants to know, what's in your pencil case? And this kind of cracked me up <laughs> because I don't really use a pencil case, as you'll see. Um, and I, I, I have a system for storing my writing instruments. And I did a video just recently, just within the last week or so, I think, showing my tote bag organizer deal that I use for markers and pens and pencils. It's this one. It stores my markers horizontally and then it sorts my different, you know, pens and pencils and paint pens and whatever. And it's portable should I need to port it. <laughs> <clears throat> so this, this is what I use. This works well. I'm not really going to talk a whole lot about this because I already did in that other video. And if I remember, I'll put a link to that so that you can see. But in that video, I really didn't go through the case and show what's inside each pencil and pen case. So I thought this would be a good time to do that because I do often get asked about what kinds of pens and markers and things that I use. And um, I know I'm curious about what other people use. I like to see what's in their, their pencil case and in their purse and in their drawers and <laughs> in their medicine cabinet, you know, anything. <laughs> I'm just nosy that way. So that's what I'm going to do. Now she has a list of questions here. And I'm going to try my best to answer them. She asks, what pencil case are you using? Well, you just saw it. For argument's sake, we'll call this clear tote my pencil case. Okay. Why do I use it? Well, I use it because it's portable. And very rarely do I sit at a table or desk and um, color or draw or whatever. I'm usually on the couch, I'm in a chair, I, I, you know, it has to be able to move around not only inside my house, but outside as well. You know, if I travel or something, I want to be able to grab and go. So that's why I use it. Uh, question three, where was it from? Amazon. And on the video I did that shows this bag and the little organizers inside, I did put links so that you can um, go to Amazon and see if that's something that appeals to you. Question four, do you carry it out and about or does it stay home? If I ever went out and about, I would carry it. <laughs> but for the most part, it stays home. Um, yeah, you know, like I said, it, it's, it's got that option. I can do either. Question five, show us what's inside. Okay, here's the fun part. Let's see what's inside. <laughs> this is not technically a pencil case. This is a whole writing instrument storage system. <laughs> but that's what I use, so here we go. This container right here holds most of my markers, but not all. It holds the ones that I use most frequently. And those are my um, Faber-Castell Big Brush pens and Sharpies. And these are a um, Bic brand of permanent marker, similar to a Sharpie. And then there's a couple of, you know, random things in there. But for the most part, that's what's in here. Those are the ones that I use most frequently. So that's that little doodah. Oh, there's a little pouch right here that has a pen, uh, metal sharpie, and the refill for it. Now, I also have, let's count these. I got six of these little things. Um, I think they're supposed to be maybe makeup bags. But they're just the right length for um, almost all pens and markers. 
Uh, the longest ones I have are some long skinny Tombow markers and they fit in these bags. So it should hold any kind of marker that you have if you need a small um, case for them. And these are kind of divided up in different categories. Let's just grab. Okay, this one's a miscellany. And in here, I've got some fabric markers. See, those are those freakishly long Tombos. Some Tria markers and some blender. These are um, blender pens to use with alcohol inks, chart pack pens. So, that is what goes in this one. This one is paint pens, and I have a variety of different brands. Um, I am not loyal to any one particular paint pen, although I have to say that I'm really loving Crink right now. They're expensive, um, but they're good. So, um, yeah, I'm liking the Crink paint pens. I like the Liquitex paint pens. This is the only one I have left. I've gone through a couple of them. I don't have a whole lot. These are from Walmart. They did have a label on it, but it was irritating me, so I just peeled it off. They're just super cheap paint pens. I've been using them to make um, garage sale signs. <laughs> the only reason I bought them. Just super cheap so I can run through them real fast because I'm not going to use my crank paint pens to make garage sale signs. I just don't think that's why. Some of these are older um, deco color pens, and then these Marvy paint pens. I don't know where I got that. That's a Sakura gold paint pen. Some Sharpie metallic pens. Um, you know, these are just regular different paint pens that I have and like and use. Is that another? Yep, there's a deco color. That one is almost empty. Okay, Sharpie. Um, oh, another Liquitex flat. This one is a Faber-Castell silver. It's an unusual, I don't think it's paint. This one is, uh, yep, it's India ink. It is silver India ink, not really paint. But it's silver metallic, so I stick it in here because it kind of goes. This is a, this is from Zebra, and it is, I believe, an oil-based paint pen that I got at um, the Fit store, which is like a Daiso. It's like a Japanese dollar store, and I really like this. And my daughter tells me what this says. She, I have to take her with me when I go because she can tell me which ones are water-based and which ones are oil-based because she can read Japanese and I can't. So there's that. And I think all of these are Posca pens, which clearly are some of my favorites, especially for white. Um, they have a nice, thick, opaque, white uh, paint in them, and um, they they write clearly. And I think one of my favorite things about them is, you know, most, you know, that's your typical paint pen, right? And if it's not that kind of tip, then it's usually, um, you know, the little skinny one. But Posca has this one where it's kind of right in between. And this has got to be my favorite. It's really, really pointy on the end. And um, I just love the size and shape of that. So, there's my paint pens and how I feel about each one. Gel pens are in my pencil case. Um, I don't use gel pens often. I, I use a lot of white. But as far as colors go, just every now and then, here and there. I, I really, I don't use them often. I don't make good use of my gel pens like I should. I don't think that's right. These are souffle pens and the lids have never stayed on good. I have some of those, some souffle pens. I don't know, there may be some glaze pens in here. Um, some regular jelly roll. And see, these are sparkly kinds. 
I think that's kind of a metallic one. So I've got jelly roll pens, a variety of different ones that I rarely use, but, you know, on occasion I do reach for one, so it's good to have them. Where's your lid? It's still in the back. Okay. I've got those. These are some pens. I think Victor sent me these pens from Ukraine, and these are just some really good pens, and I have to tell you, I was surprised at how good they are, but they are not bad um, colored pens at all. I don't know that they're gel pens. I think they're just a ballpoint ink. I'm not sure, but I put them in here because um, this is where I keep really any kind of pens that have colored ink. It doesn't necessarily mean just gel pen. So there's these. I oh, look, I'm seeing more jelly rolls. Another jelly roll, another jelly roll. I really should start using some of these up, huh? There's another jelly roll. I have way more jelly roll pens than I thought. So, there's those. These are also some uh, silver metallic gel pens that, I, that Victor sent that are amazing. They write smooth. Um, they have a really shiny silver metallic ink, and I love these pens. These are great pens. Oh, these are some random, um, what brand are they? Oh, this is a Pentel Hybrid. Pentel Hybrid uh, Technica is one of my favorite pens because it comes with a really, really fine point. This is a red one. I think I got that at the Fit store. And this is a um, Signo. Uniball Signo. This one is a. This one says the ultimate gel pen, metallic American crafts, made in Japan. <laughs> so, there we have that. Just <laughs> random gel pens. Um, this one, I picked this one up at Jerry's Artorama not too long ago to give it a try. It's a Uniball Vision Elite. I was not impressed. It's okay, um, but yeah, nothing, nothing spectacular. And these are just a variety of white gel pens. Um, if I had to pick a favorite, I think I would probably go with probably the Uniball Signo Angelic which is what this is. You know, this is the typical one millimeter um, Signo white gel pen. The Angelic has a smaller barrel, which I like. It has a, um, I don't know what size this one is, but it has a smaller, a finer point. But see, it still writes really well, really smooth. These are all good, and I have a variety. There's Pilot, there's, um, this is called Y and C Gel Extreme. I don't know where I got that. Probably Jet Pens. I do order from Jet Pens pretty regularly. That's a different Pilot and Uniball and Uniball. And this is a different Uniball Signo, or it may be just the Japanese packaging. I'm not sure. Anyway, um, I like me some white gel pens. <laughs> Clearly. Okay. Also in my pencil case, I have a, this is one little um, pouch full of accessories. There's some ink cartridge refills. These are for the Copic multiliner pen, which is okay. I'm not really impressed with it. Lots of erasers, pencil sharpeners, little, um, little, cozies to go in your pencil so that they don't hurt you, and eraser refills, that kind of thing. So, that's what that little pouch is. Oh look, I have pencils in my pencil case. <laughs> okay, these are my pencils. I don't know why there's glue in here. Clearly, that should go in the accessory pouch. Okay. For pencils, actually, you know, pencil pencils. Um, 
I, I don't really have a favorite. Uh, I do occasionally use a mechanical pencil for stuff. Um, uh, it's any, I do keep an eraser. Okay, that one's gross. I need to get another one out. But these kneaded erasers are my favorite because I erase a lot and these don't make any dust at all. No zero eraser dust. So I like these. And it starts out a light gray so you can see it is well used. And then these um, are good for erasing little things. And this right here this is a Sanford um, non-abrasive, non-smudging vinyl for erasing draft film. So it is intended for erasing draft film, but it's just a good small eraser for anything. So I keep that on hand. I have a black um, Faber-Castell. I thought I had Stabilo. I don't know why this is in here. Well, anyway, there's that. And then for regular pencils, sometimes I use these. And these are mostly just cheap. Uh, oh, look. Cheap Joe's. Cheap Joe's pencils. There's a pedigree um, pencil. I like these, the double-sided. There's These are just like from Hobby Lobby. Generals. Um, just regular um pencils and there's more cheap joes and I do I get a, I have a lot because they're all in a variety whoops, of different hardnesses um, you know most of the time when I'm drawing something I sketch with a really soft lead and then I go in and fine-tune it with a harder lead pencil so I just have a variety these I do use a lot. These, if I had to pick a favorite, I guess it would probably be these because you can see from how short they are, they're the ones that I tend to reach for. And these are, um, I think that these are Prismacolor drawing. Yeah, Prismacolor. Um, I think they call them Prismacolor turquoise drawing pencils. And I have, <laughs> there's not much left of those. <laughs> but I have them in uh, a variety of different hardnesses. So those are the pencils that are in my pencil case. Uh, drawing pens, you know, these are these are what I love most, and um, I have just lots of different kinds because I like to try different kinds of drawing pens, and some of them I do go back to. You know, I like them, but um, again, I don't know that I have an absolute favorite. Uh, I just got this the other day, obviously, but I have a few single, yeah, here we go. I have a few others that I've not quite used up. But these are the, um, I don't know how you say that, Odo Graphic Liners. They're similar to the uh, feud pens, and then they have that they have that really weird ball on them. And this is really hard to explain, but you know everybody's kind of been going gaga over the feud pens, and I've got one here. There's a feud, and I don't know if you can tell how it just has an unusual nib on it, but it it writes really well on pretty much everything. I have some of these. These are Royal. Lang Nickel Nano Liners permanent pens. I like these pens. These are good pens. The only issue I have with them is that they bleed through really, really bad. Um, normally, that's not a big deal for me because you know I don't have to do a lot of you know I don't do a lot of front and back doodling. But um, you know if you were to do that, these bleed through real, real bad. They're worse than a sharpie. But they're a good permanent pen. So, you know, it's trade off. Oh, let's see. This one I reach for quite a bit. This is called a Preppy Sign Pen. I think it's called Preppy Platinum Sign Pen. And it has an oil based ink. 
and it's refillable. So, um, and I've got some refills in there for it. I like this pen because it is a good ink and I like the um, refillable quality of it. Marvy has some drawing pens. Of course, they have their lay pen, which, you know, I, I was so over that back in the 80s. I don't, I don't buy them anymore. I, they're a decent pen and I like the really, really thin barrel, but they last like 10 minutes <laughs> and then they're empty. <laughs> But this is Le Pen Drawing, so I thought I would give this one a try. Um, so I got some really, really skinny tips and then a good .08 is my usual um, doodle size that I use. And then these little, little tiny skinny ones. They're okay. They're not bad. They're definitely better than the regular Le Pen, but nothing special. So there's those. Um, let's see, what else have I got? These are some of my favorites. I do go back to these over and over again, and that's not it. These are the Deleter Neo Pico Line 2. Um, and I don't know what any of that means, but I, you can see I've got several. They come in different sizes. I get these from Jet Pens. They have a good, rich black ink, and they are, um, it's a waterproof pigment ink, and it's really good for, um, it doesn't smudge, that's what I'm trying to say. So I've got that in a couple sizes, and I like it because it comes in a rare two millimeter size, which you don't see often in a drawing pen. So those are the... Those are from Jet Pens. I do like Prismacolor drawing pens. I used to use these just exclusively, but they're a little bit pricey and they don't last long enough. I have a set of colored ones. These, I think they were like a gift with purchase when I bought a set of these once or something. And they are um, colored brush pens, which I like just fine, but I don't use a whole lot of color in my doodling. So, um, but the Prismacolor, this one is a brush tip and this one is a chisel tip and then they have the, you know, your standard 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.5 uh, nib sizes. So, there you go. Copic Multiliners. I have a 7 millimeter and a brush nib and these these are good because the nibs are replaceable, so you know, because it'd be kind of hard, on, especially on the brush tips. You can just get a new one, pop it in there. Um, they're refillable. They come with refillable ink cartridges you can get. That is really the only good thing I can say about them. <laughs> I'm not real impressed with them. Uh, for the most part, they leak for no apparent reason. Um, the ink is okay. Um, it's nothing special. It's, you know, I, I, they're just okay. They're, um, I'm not really impressed with them. But if you want, you know, a refillable pen that has nibs you can change out, then there you go. Okay, what else? We've got, I don't know what this is. Oh yeah, this was a Jet Pens, um, I don't know, a Pilot lettering pen, and it has a chisel tip. And this has some good ink in it. You can see I've kind of narfed up that chisel tip because I've used it a lot. Um, but it's really good for filling in when you're drawing. This one is also, this one I might have got at the Fit Store. It's a Pentel. Oh, see, I wrote oil <laughs> on there. Taylor had to translate for me. She said it's an oil-based ink. And that's a good size nib right there. Um, let's see what else we have. This one, the Pilot Multiball, which I think I got at Jet Pens. It's just a fine tip rollerball pen. It's okay. Nothing special. What else? What are these? I don't know what these are. Oh, I know what those are. Okay. I picked these up not too long ago at um, Jerry's Artorama. This is Jerry's brand or their line of drawing pens. It's called the it. Permanent acid-free non-fading pigment ink. Professional technical pen. They're okay. I have 
no complaints about them. They're just a, a decent drawing pen. So, um, wow, the lids. Okay, I have a complaint. <laughs> the lids. Oh, just that lid was really hard to get off and on. But yeah, they're a, they're a decent pen. So there's those. Um, I don't know what these are. What are these gray ones? This one. Sakura Microperm 05. That one evidently was probably on sale at JetPen, so I grabbed it. I tend to do that. This one is a, oh, I think this is an oil-based marker from the Fit store. And it has, uh, I'll, I'll, made in Japan is the only thing written in English on here. So <laughs> does me no good. This is an oil-based uni pen for Pro. Mm -hmm. And um, I have no memory of using this. I haven't had it very long. I don't think maybe I've used it, or if I have, I haven't used it enough to form an opinion. Okay, I'm going to set that one aside so that I'll remember to actually use it. Because I forgot I had it. It's kind of new to me. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. This one is a Tombow pen, calligraphy pen made in Japan. That's the only English on here, so that's all I know. And there, oh yeah, this is one of those like nylon sort of brush tips. Can you see it's kind of clear and then it has the brush on the end. They, they just feel really good to write with. So there's that one. And one that's similar to that are these Pentel Touch pens. And I think that Jet Pens calls them a sign pen. That one's a little bit different, but they're really basically the same. Let me see. Yeah, these. So, is there any difference at all? Yeah, nib size is the difference. They're Pentel Touch sign pens, and they have that weird, I don't even know if it's nylon, but it feels like a nylon brush tip, and it just, it, I really love these pens. They just feel good going across the paper, and they're good pens, you know. They're very inexpensive. Um, they last, you know, they're decent. So I tend to buy three or four of these every time I order from Jet Pens just to have them on hand. And what are these? This, oh look, it's another uni pen. Uh -huh. What do we got here? This is different. Oil based, pigment based. Okay, again, no memory of trying either of these. I'm going to make it my goal to try those out today. These are, okay, these are, are decent pens too. Sakura Pigma Sensei pen. 0.6, a 1.0, and a 0.3. So I've got a variety of different sizes, and they have also kind of an unusual nib on them. Um, I don't use these a whole lot, but I do grab them now and then, and I like them. They're a decent pen. That's a little skinny one. So, there's my drawing pens. I haven't ordered from Jet Pens in a while, so I'm feeling kind of a need to go and see what they've got. <laughs> so that's what's in my pencil case, if we're going to call this my pencil case. But I'll show you a couple of other cases that I have as well. This is extra markers, and I just keep these in this box on a shelf because I don't use them often. These are like... They're mostly dollar store markers or kids markers. There's some, these are some flare pens that I got really cheap off Amazon recently. But they're basically just junk markers. Um, and I use them for stuff. And, oh, these blender, I love these. There's little blendy pens. There's two different colors in here and then yeah, I don't know if you can see right there, but if you twist them, they come up and touch each other, and then they blend. You know, you can have a little bit of orange in your green or green in your orange. That's just fun. <laughs> I got those at a toy store <laughs> <They're> for kids, <laughs> but I love them. <laughs> so these are my um, just fun to play with junk markers.
Okay, I had a dead battery situation. Um, <laughs> so, got that taken care of. I don't know where I left off, so I'm just going to start over with the last of my um, pencil cases, <laughs> which is my colored pencil box. This is where I keep all of my colored pencils, which are all Prismacolor. That's what I use. There may be a scattered one or two weirdos in there somewhere. But I prefer um, Prismacolor. <clears throat> They're my favorites. So in this box, I've got my very well-used pencils over here. And I stuck a piece of cardboard in here to divide it up because I, I keep all this other stuff in here. And I did have it just rolling around with the pencils and it was a mess. So I stuck this in here. And I also keep a chamois. This is a small piece of a chamois, which I actually cleaned it yesterday. It was covered with waxy uh, pencil, and then I used it last night. But this is good for blending sometimes. Um, another is odorless mineral spirits, which I keep in this jar with some sponge tops that came off of some really cheap sponge paint brushes that I was going to throw away. Um, I just ripped the little tops off and shoved them in here because I stole this idea from someone. Who was it? I think it was the Frugal Crafter. I think it was. She kept her odorless mineral spirits in a little jar and of course she had a, a pretty little sponge and you know and it was all nice and pretty and then here's my chewed up <laughs> baby food jar with my grungy old sponges but you know what it works <laughs> so anyway that's where I keep that and I use these or use this with these blending stumps which I have several and uh, some different sizes and shapes. And these have a name. I forget what the name is. And it's, it's a weird name. And it's something like, uh, to me, it's like a combination between um, tortellini and tomatillo. <laughs> and I don't know exactly what it is. I forget. So I just call them blending stumps because their name is too confusing. And if you use these little blenders, you need to have some kind of a um, sandpaper thing to clean them off. And you can buy one of these at the art supply store and, you know, do that little thing to it. Total waste of money. Yes, I do have one because, you know, when I first started using them, I thought I had to have one. No, no, no. All you need is just sandpaper from the hardware store, something cheap. So I also keep a sanding block in here, which hardly has any sanding capabilities left on it. But it does clean these little paper blenders. But what you can also use is some uh, emery boards because these are really cheap and they do a, a good job of cleaning off your little blending stumps. So there we go. I also have a mechanical pencil in here and a dry erase marker, which does not belong. I don't know why that's in there. These are some little index cards that I can doodle on, should I feel in inspired to do that. Um, I also keep a couple different pencil sharpeners. This one has three different sized holes for my one size pencil, <laughs> but okay, whatever. It's in there. I have to confess, I use an electric pencil sharpener with my colored pencils. I know there are colored pencil purists out there who are as gasping in shock and horror because this is a big no-no with colored pencils. But let me tell you something. Prismacolor pencils, they are known for breaking. And you can see I've got broken leads in here. They're all over the place. This is just what they do. And it, it's partly because the pencil is so soft and another part of it is due to the fact or due to the way that it's manufactured. 
the um, most colored pencil manufacturers put a line of glue down the side of the lead, which holds it into its little wooden casing thing. Prismacolor puts like three dots of glue. So on the upside, you get less um, dead spots in your lead when you're coloring. And if you've used colored pencils a lot, you know what I'm talking about. You're coloring along, everything's going fine, and then all of a sudden it grates across the paper. And you're like, okay, what was that? Because <laughs> it looked fine. You know, it wasn't all down to the wood. It just for no reason, something weird happened. That's because you hit some glue. <laughs> Um, with Prismacolor, you don't get that you, because there's only like three little dots in there. So on the upside, you get a lot fewer dead spots on your lead. On the downside, you get easy breakage. You also get this. Um, it does happen on occasion. And, you know, I mean, this is still perfectly good. I just kind of pull it out and use it like that. You know, it'll... It'll work, and it's really strange because I have two or three of this same color. They all did this. Just this color. Really, really weird. So anyway, Prismacolor pencils, they're going to break no matter what you do. Um, so if, if you've been told that using a manual sharpener will help to keep your pencil leads from, from breaking off, that, that may be true with other brands. With Prismacolors, you're screwed either way. They are going to break. It's just, it just goes with it. So I do use an electric sharpener. And if you use it judiciously, you're not going to have a problem. Of course, in, you know, another downside of the sharpener is that you can grind your pencil down to nothing in no time flat. That's really easy to do. But I just sharpened all my pencils the other day. so. Let me see if I can find them that use sharpening because I was using them. Mm. I don't really need sharpening. But if, oh, this this one. Oh, bless it. It's just kind of not much left. But if you just stick it in for just a few seconds and pull it out, you're not going to lose much pencil at all. You know, you don't want to grind it down to nothing. But if you're very careful. You can sharpen your pencil um, with an electric sharpener without grinding them away and causing breakage. So, this is it, and this is a Derwent um, battery operated thing. I think I got off Amazon. Um, and it's got different size holes, and plus, you can adjust the um, the way it sharpens, you know, if you want just a tiny little point or a long point, it's adjustable that way. So, there is what I used. And this, um, is that all? I can't see the front. I don't know why those are in there. Um, I use these to mark my table when I'm filming. I'll put them just outside the frame so that I can look down and see exactly where I need to put my stuff to keep centered. So I guess that's why they're in there. This is a Prismacolor, whatever you call it. I forget what they call these, but it's it's basically the same thing that's inside the pencil, but it doesn't have the wood around it. It's just like the lead by itself. I think that was a gift with purchase at some point or something. I don't remember. So anyway. That is what is in my uh, colored pencil box. And I guess I've been through all of my pencil and pen and marker boxes now. So um, let me see what the other questions are on the challenge. The next question is number six. What was in there that you had forgotten about? Well, these. Um, drawing pens I have forgotten about because you know I saw them and they were like brand new because <laughs> I have no memory of using them so yeah I've forgotten about these um, what's your most used favorite item okay I think I already talked about that when I went through everything and you know I really can't pick a single favorite anything but I can give you an idea of my favorites number eight 
What will you leave out now that you've gone through your pencil box? Well, for one thing, I'm going to leave this dry erase marker out of my colored pencil box because I don't even know why it was there. Uh, how often do you go through your, your pencil case? <laughs> Clearly not often enough. <laughs> I would say, I would say probably a couple of times a year. Um, I tend to kind of go through them when I buy new stuff to add, like if I buy some new drawing pens, I will go through all of my other drawing pens, I'll see what still writes, what doesn't, you know, that kind of thing. Um, and I usually do that before I order the new pens. And the last question, what are your future plans? Will you make any changes? Will you buy a new case? No, I don't have any future plans, especially since my, my regular pencil case is still, you know, fairly new. And I'm liking it. It's working. So, um, I don't really have any plans for any changes. This could probably do with a better um, container because this poor little thing's falling apart. I've had to duct tape it back together. It was really more decorative. It wasn't intended to actually hold stuff. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I'm going to have to end up replacing that eventually, but um, for now, everything is working. It, I have a space for everything. I haven't outgrown it all, so you know what? It's good. So that is all I have. That is what's in my pencil case. Um, if you haven't uh, made a video responding to this tag. I hope that you will do that because I would love to see what's in your pencil case. And if your pencil case is like my first one, let me show you my first one. This held all of my drawing pens, my pencils, and I think my markers too because I only had a couple of Sharpies. That was my first pencil case. It was this little leather pouch thing um, just like that. Um, I used it for quite a while actually. It, it took me a while to outgrow it and then when I outgrew it, I outgrew it with a vengeance. But even if your whole entire pencil pen collection fits in a case like this, I'd like to see it because I'm just nosy that way. I love to see what other people use. Okay, that's all I have for now. So, the end.